Sunday. I hope you had a nice week. Today, we are going to be doing a little part two to a video I did almost like eight months ago now, which is insane. I did this video, which was all of my quarantine favorites, my recommendations for you guys stuck at home. It's crazy that kind of so much time has gone by and we're all still, you know, stuck at home looking for some recommendations. I thought, you know, part two is due. It's been like eight months. I have watched, read, listened to loads of different things since then and hopefully this will give you some inspiration for things to do at home, new content to consume. I hope this is enjoyable. I have everything written down in my little notebook. I'm gonna try to keep it concise and specific because this video I have so many things I want to talk about and I really don't want this to go on for like five hours. So I've split this up into film slash TV, books, podcasts, creators and music. Some of these are a lot bigger than others and I just felt like it was right to split them up. I will have this video sectioned into chunks so you can like click along the bottom if you're interested in a certain genre of things that I'm going to be talking about. Okay, so first thing I'm going to talk about is films slash TV. I found that there's something so nice about watching a show and then each day you have another episode to watch. It's just like a nice piece of like consistency in your life that isn't really in many other areas at the moment. It's making me feel better that I can watch a show every day and one of the shows I've been watching a lot is Outnumbered. Such a random choice. I watched it a lot like when I was a lot younger. And it's such a fun show if you are not British. I don't know if you'll really like it. I don't know. It basically follows like family of five who just around like family life. But it's so funny and just so like background show, not too deep and just kind of chill. Very much recommend rewatching it. I watched it over Christmas. And then when I came back, I told Neve that I rewatched it. She was like, yes. So we watched it again. I have It's a Sin, which we finished in two days, which is pretty impressive. So it's a five part short series. Each episode I think is like 45 minutes long. It follows a group of friends during the AIDS epidemic. It goes across like quite a big time period, but I think it's mainly in like the 80s. So incredibly moving. Um, I've had a lot of people talking about this on social media. Probably a lot of you have already watched it. I thought it was so incredibly well made, quite educational. I personally didn't know a lot about. I was talking to my mom about it and she was telling me how she used to volunteer in her 20s in an HIV help center thing. And I just was talking to her a lot about it. And I thought that was really interesting because I don't know, it's just not something that I I've ever been taught about really in school and I just thought it was, an, it's also an amazing show just so like heart clenching like I was in kind of a mess when it finished and it's very emotional. It's also LGBTQ plus history month in the UK which I think is why it's been released this month but yeah unreal I like that's probably my biggest recommendation from this video. Next I watched Never Have I Ever on Netflix again I'm very late to the party on this one it came out sometime last year um, but it follows an Indian American teenager in school she's navigating like relationships family trouble friendships and it's just a really good show it's very interesting to watch a show where the main character is not white <laughs> the bar's really low when you say that's like a great thing but i thought it was really interesting especially as somebody who is indian i just really enjoyed it it's quite a light-hearted funny show but i did cry in the last episode so it still has the kind of hooked and like emotionally invested which i thought was amazing and it's not too long either i think i watched it in like a couple days next i have the queen's gambit i watched this like over christmas i think or maybe just before again another very talked about show on social media a girl called beth from literally from like i think she's like six or seven in the first couple episodes up until like mid 20s i think and she plays chess and she's unreal she starts out living in an orphanage and then you follow her kind of getting fostered then just like becoming an adult and it's such an interesting show if you had told me the plot i wouldn't have been like oh i wouldn't necessarily have thought i would be that interested very cool i think to watch something that is about a topic you like know nothing about and is very different to anything i've ever watched before so i really enjoyed that next i have what happened to monday so this is kind of like a dystopian film about a time i think it's like in america where the one child policy is being very heavily enforced basically there's like these seven what would you call seven kids seven tuplets each go out one day each so monday gets to go out on monday and then tuesday on tuesday etc and they're all pretending to be this one person and then they kind of get like caught in the lie a little bit and that's just such a good movie i watched that maybe like five years ago 
and then I just rewatched it recently and it reminded me of how good that movie is. Really recommend, it's a little bit like weird, dystopian stuff always weirds me out a little bit but it's definitely a fun movie and again I don't think I've really ever seen anything like it so. I also watched the documentary 13th which is about mass incarceration in the US and the racism and systemic racism that comes with that and it was a very very good starting point. I watched this like, I don't even know, maybe like six to eight months ago and it was an amazing starting point for me and like just looking into more about black oppression. It does focus on the US but I still found it really interesting and I would recommend anybody watching it. I also watched When They See Us which oh this is probably one of the best things I've watched like ever. The story of the Central Park Five who were five black boys accused of raping a woman in Central Park. Obviously if those themes do not seem like appropriate for you, definitely don't watch this one. So incredibly heartbreaking. So the story is that they didn't do it. I guess I don't want to like ruin it but it's also a true story so I feel like you probably know but yeah they didn't do it and the way that it, the police handled it was so bad and it's honestly like the saddest thing to watch it and just knowing that that actually happened to those five boys is like a horrible thought. I'd really recommend you watch it and it's very emotional. I cried a lot in this one but again like important to understand these types of things that actually happened like it's a real life story that is so heartbreaking but it's so important to learn about sort of thing and I thought it was so well made and then the last thing I watched is Athlete A which is a documentary about the issues that happened within the US gymnastics team I watched it kind of a while ago but it was intense so if you haven't like heard about this there was a lot of issues of sexual abuse within um, US gymnastics teams with like the doctors and people that they were like the young gymnasts were working with and this is a documentary about that. It was really hard to watch and I did gymnastics growing up and like the sport means a lot to me so it was really difficult to watch but again a really interesting and important documentary if you feel comfortable with like those themes. I thought it was really well made and I'd heard a lot and I've watched like a lot of YouTube videos so the gymnasts um, a lot of them stood up in court and like spoke about what happened to them and those are on YouTube I watched a lot of those like years ago when it first kind of came to the surface watching that documentary kind of like filled in the blanks for me and I really just feel like it's such a horrible horrible thing that happened and it was yeah just very hard to watch but I think a very good documentary okay so next I'm gonna talk about some books your girl has been off her reading game. When I last did this video, I had read so many books. I was reading all the time. I was just getting a book, reading in my garden in the sun. Oh, I wish. Someday. I feel like spring's coming. Obviously, I've been back at uni and I've been just busy, like, being an adult, living here. I don't have as much, like, free time to read and I just to be honest, I just didn't make the time because I feel like it's locked up. I definitely could make the time, but I'm just not doing it. And I find it really hard to read when I'm also doing a lot of uni work, so this section's a little lacking, but still some amazing reads. I read The Defining Decade, which is about being in your 20s and why it's the decade of your life that kind of defines who you are. And I thought it was very, very interesting. It Some parts of it I didn't necessarily agree with. It's written by a... So I think she's a psychologist and she has patients and she will talk about like exact in detail like the kind of things that they would bring to her and her advice for them and like where they are now which I thought was really interesting. I've seen a lot of people hype this up on social media again and I did really like it. I think some of it I was like I don't personally agree with that but I'm only 20 so I don't really know. I'd recommend reading it regardless. It was a very interesting read and I've definitely thought about a few things differently since reading it, which I think is a very telling sign of a good book. Next, I read The Flat Share, which was such a fun, like easy read. It follows, it's a very weird storyline actually. So this boy has a flat, he needs like extra money. So he basically puts it up to rent where one person has the flat like all day and then he has it all night. I think he worked, or the other way around or something, one of them work night shifts. So it's a really weird sort of situation where they sleep in the same bed and they, you know, use the same kitchen, bathroom, etc. but they never see each other. And like months go by in the book where they don't even see each other, which I think is so kind of hard to believe that would actually happen, but such a funny book. They end up, you know, meeting and 
you can kind of tell what the story's going, but I thought it was really good and it's very easy read if you just want something fun and interesting that isn't too heavy, which I think at the moment probably a lot of us would really like. And then at the moment I'm reading Girl, Woman, Other and Think Like a Monk. I've spoken about them a couple bit, a couple times on my channel already, so I don't really want to like go into depth, but both amazing books. Uh, like I said, I'm being so slow because of uni. I'm just like not putting as much time into reading as I wish I was. Girl, Woman, Other, I would especially recommend. It is sectioned into different characters and their experiences and it's very very like insightful book into just thinking about how other people's lives are i've only like a few people into the book but so far i've learned a lot about like other people's experiences in life and it's just really interesting and i think important to being a good person is to like understanding other people's life stories and you know how they're treated so i thought really really good book and then i'm gonna go on to podcasts and you know it's kind of cringe, but I'm going to shout out my own podcast, of course. How could I not? So since the last time I did this video, I have actually started a podcast, which if you had told me when I filmed the video the first time, I would have been like, what? No way. Like that would have been crazy to me because I definitely wanted a podcast then, but I felt like it was the kind of thing that was so out of reach that I couldn't just like do out of nowhere. But I have a podcast. It's so exciting. Um, I just uploaded the 10th episode so we're kind of like quite far into it now which is so fun and i'm really like happy with it and happy with how it's going and it's bringing me a lot of joy so i'm really yeah just excited about it and grateful to anybody any of you guys that listen it's called growing with the flow it's on apple spotify all the places i'll link it down below yeah i really i'm just so happy about it and i talk about a lot of different things like jobs money relationships, university, health, and veganism, sustainability, the whole shebang. So if you're looking for a new podcast, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> Some other podcasts that I've been loving, I've been loving the Lexi podcast. She lives in New York and it's the most random podcast. Like I was thinking about how I was gonna describe it. I was like, I don't even know how to describe it because she covers such a range of topics. And it. I think the best way to say is like, it just feels like you're sitting down with a friend and having a chat and whenever I'm on a walk or like cleaning or something, I think it's just the perfect podcast to make you feel like you're hanging out with somebody. She's so funny and just covers so many like random fun topics. So I definitely recommend her podcast. I've also been listening to Dada, which is Moya and Lauren's podcast. They are both so funny and just, again, really interesting topics. I love listening to them like chat with each other because I feel like I'm like there. And yeah, I listened to their new episode this morning just such a good podcast. Leah's Field Notes. I love her YouTube videos and she has a few podcast episodes up. They are super long. So if you have like a long train journey or I guess no one's going anywhere, but if you have like a long walk or long task that you're doing, she's done a few episodes on like different topics. I really enjoyed the episode she did talking about her experience studying abroad in Germany. I thought that was really interesting and about her a graphic design student. I thought that was so interesting. I don't know anybody in person that does that. So I thought that was just cool to learn about. And she's really like, just a cool person in my opinion. So yeah. I also love The Creative Key, which is Laura Medley's podcast. She just restarted it for the new season. And I love the episode that she did. She talks about kind of a range of things, but like she's a student. She talks about like a lot of mental health things and like social media just a range of topics and i really like her podcast she gives me very like cozy chill vibes so on to creators so i have quite a lot of these is just a mix match of like youtube instagram etc i have lots of other people that i also watch but these are all kind of like new ones that i didn't mention in my last video so number one is lin trang i have loved her videos her editing it's not fair how good it is. Like she edits so well. I just love the color, like the colors, the vibe. She's so cool. I love what she talks about. I love that she integrates kind of like politics and activism into very casual videos. I just think it's a really, really fun time. And yeah, she's obviously extremely smart and well-read and just cool. So I really recommend her videos. Next I have Hitomi again, she is such an amazing creator and she talks a lot about like spirituality and like veganism, health and I just think she's again really cool. I love her videos. 
Leah's field notes, who I just spoke about. Her videos are also stunning and something about like the light in her videos is really inspiring to me. I don't really know how to like summarize it, but I don't know. It's just, it always looks so amazing and she chats really well as well, I think. That curly top, I have been loving her Instagram content. She has impeccable style and she is stunning, gorgeous. I love her clothes and she always posts ethical outfit deets and it's a really good place to find like new sustainable brands if you are looking for any. She's so cool. She talks about a lot about like sustainability and in the environment and climate change, etc. So I really recommend her on Instagram. I think she's also on TikTok. I am not a TikTok user, but I really love her. Jordan Teresa makes amazing social commentary videos on YouTube. She's covered some really interesting topics. I think I've watched like all her videos, but I would highly recommend if you want to learn about the world and just be a better, <laughs> better human, I would like really recommend her videos. Recent one was about bimbo vacation, which I thought was really interesting. She did an amazing one on the gentrification of Depop, which I thought was really, really insightful and just loads of topics like that. And I think it's very, very interesting and she's very good at like giving both sides of an argument and just talking in such where she just like talks so incredibly well and i've taken like a lot away from her videos which i think is very special so margot lee i love her videos i've watched them for ages and she just moved to new york so i'm living my new york dreams through her and i really am like liking her content at the moment jack edwards has been doing these really cool videos where he will like read books for a week or 24 hours all about like a certain topic it's such a good way of like reading a book without reading a book like he does all the work for you and he's firstly he's like it's so funny the puns like i love it he did one recently of reading arabic books for a week which i thought was so interesting uk schools we obviously have to read books for like gcse and like school and stuff and i don't feel like the books that we read are very diverse and I just thought it was really amazing that he did a whole video about like Arabic literature because I have never like studied that in school and I like thought it was really interesting to hear about those sort of books and then I always leave the video like re thinking I really want to read the book so love those videos and I think it's a really unique style of video as well so okay next I have Grackle oh, she's the funniest human on this earth hands down love her she is just amazing uh, she makes a lot of like food videos but also vlogs and just random stuff i think i mainly watch her for like her personality she's just amazing d'angelo wallace he has made quite a few really amazing um in West, like documentary style social commentary videos and he did one recently titled influencer 19 which i thought was insane and like you can just tell him and jordan Teresa, like it's insane how much research must go into those videos again just a really amazing creator i've also got jazzy lee her editing again she does so many really cool animations and like drawings overlaid and I just think it must take her hours and hours. As somebody who like makes YouTube videos and edits them and stuff, I am blown away by like her editing. And she's also just a really cute human, so I really love her videos. <laughs> We're almost there now. Eve Cornwell, she recently uploaded a video called, I think it's called a self-identity crisis. Go and watch that video, it was so good everything she said was just so well said and just so interesting and yeah amazing and i love like i love her i think she's a really good creator and then my last one is natasha med x i love her style i just follow her on instagram and her style it's just chef's kiss okay and then music my music oh guys i have a music issue where i hate listening to music i don't know already which is 100 percent a problem but I just hate it, I don't enjoy it. I don't wanna to listen to something unless I can sing along. Since the last time I did this video, Taylor Swift has dropped two albums and a new version of Love Story. No idea what we did to deserve that. Like, insane, she is, I just love her so much. So, Taylor Swift is the whole music section. I don't know what else to say. Invisible String is my favorite from Folklore and then, Probably No Body, No Crime from Evermore. My favorite is Folklore. I think I've finally come to a decision that my favorite's Folklore. And yeah, I, when she released the new version of Love Story, I was just like jamming along like, oh, I'm so happy she's doing that. A good time. I've also written 2000s playlists. I have like a playlist of like 70s, 80s, 90s 
2000s and 10s on my Spotify if you want to like follow along. Or maybe I'll make some more playlists because that could be fun. I've just been really into 2000s music. I think anything that makes me nostalgic and like feel at home, I am loving at the moment. Okay, so that is everything that I have. If you have any more recommendations, please comment them down below. I would love to hear. Content consumption is something to be very careful about at the moment, but I have found like so many like films, shows, books, etc. that have just made me really happy and brought me a lot of joy, which is very, very much appreciated. So yeah, I want to say thank you so much to you guys for watching. If you stayed all the way to the end, I love you and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye!